Automation 360.24 was recently released. In this video, I'm going to talk about the top five developer features that you need to be on the lookout for in this .24 release and the features that will help you to accelerate your automation journey. So let's jump right in. Coming in at number five, recorder improvements. I always get psyched to see recorder improvements included in a release. Uh, one of the features in this particular release was support for conditional objects when using Edge in IE mode. So if you're using Edge, you do have the ability to open any page or any web application in IE mode, which is basically a virtualization of what it would look like in Internet Explorer. But we now have support for the loop while uh, wait for condition and also the if package. And you can detect if those objects exist or objects don't exist and set up your conditions accordingly. So in the right hand side here, you can see that we're checking to see if an object exists in a particular page that was using uh, Edge in IE mode. So we do have support for that now. We also have the ability to capture objects inside cross-domain iframes that have all, multiple iframes in existence, right? So this is a very specific use case where if you've got a page, it has an iframe inside of it, but there's also multiple iframes inside of that, you do have the ability to capture objects therein. So again, very specific use case, but if you've been waiting for that one, that's awesome because that's now here. And then finally, the other recorder improvement I wanted to highlight was the pop-up and dialogue support. So sometimes in uh, an application, you might see that there is a like gray bar at the top that pops up. Uh, that's like a JavaScript note or a JavaScript notification. Uh, you can now dismiss, interface with, whatever, clone those using the recorder uh, package. So that is actually a great functionality because I've had instances where those have come up and they can be challenging to deal with. Sometimes you try keystrokes, sometimes you try image-based recognition, sometimes you try uh, doing a recorder with an application instead of with a browser. So you now have support for those natively with the recorder package. Coming in at number four, the Google Docs AI package. So this is a great functionality if you're using Google Doc AI. If you're not familiar with Google Doc AI, it enables you to send an image or a document to the Google Doc AI uh, with a specific document processor. You can then extract all of the data from those forms as key value pairs. They're returned to you as a JSON. You would retrieve that JSON format and then parse and use that however you want. So if I've got a mortgage document or if I've got a tax form like a 1040 EZ, I could send that document to Google Doc AI. It would extract all of the data for me with those predefined document processors, send that back to me. I get that as a JSON format and then I can parse that and deal with it as I want to. So great functionality there. If you haven't checked out Google Doc AI, I would encourage you to do that. This package is super simple to use. You connect, you send a document, and you uh, close the session. That's it, right? So uh, great package, easy to use, and great way to do some document processing within your Automation Anywhere bots. Coming in at number three, Ari updates. So a couple cool updates for Ari. If you're not familiar with Ari, Ari is Automation Anywhere's robotic interface, and it enables for human-in-the-loop processing, and that could be a human starts a task and a bot finishes it, or a bot starts a task and a human does a part of it and then another bot goes, right? Any combination of those. Um, but with Ari, we have the ability for Ari to run in Ari Web, which is where a human uses a web interface and Ari is running on a pool of bot runners. Or we have the ability for Ari to run on a local user's desktop, which would be like an attended automation use case. For those attended automation anywhere use cases, you can run attended bots in a virtual window now, which is background processing. So if I'm a customer service rep and I'm doing something on my machine, but I need a bot to run as well, I can click a button, I can kick that bot off. The bot will run in a little virtual window. I can still use my machine. I can still do everything I was doing. It's not gonna interfere with my mouse clicks. It's not gonna interfere with my keyboard, but that bot can still run locally and still process to do the things that it needs to do. Maybe it's coming back with me for data. Maybe it's doing some kind of lookup on the back end, and it's gonna pop up with some data that I need for the processing I'm doing right now. That's a capability that was recently released. Definitely worth checking out. You also have the ability when using Ari Web to configure a scheduler for each team. So again, if I have a customer service team, I have a finance team, I have an operations team, each of them likely has a pool of bot runners that they want to use for their Ari Web processing. We can now use those different schedulers to point to those specific pools of runners. 
So if I'm a finance user, I'm always using the finance bot runner pool. I'm not using the ones that belong to operation or the ones that uh, belong to customer service, okay? So great functionality there and a great way for organizations to better use their bot runners. Finally, there's support for the password type fields in the form builder. And this is great, especially for RE Web. This enables me to set up uh, password fields and I can then pass those passwords securely to a bot for any processing the bot needs to do. On the bot side, I would just need to configure a uh, credential variable type and mark that as an input. So you can see here in the screenshot, we have a credential that is set as in password. I've marked it as an input. And so that would enable me to map from my RE process to my bot that variable, that uh, secure password. And that would enable the bot to securely store and temporarily use that password uh, in an application for some authentication purpose, whatever it needs to, um, so that I can do secure processing end to end. And I don't have to worry about that password being available in plain text. Coming in at number two, IQBot Extraction 360. Early adopters can now process documents in the new IQBot Extraction 360 capability. What this means is that IQBot will automatically create the bots to extract and download my data, as well as the RE process and forms that are needed to manage exceptions. So this is a great functionality for being able to handle the exceptions that might show up for my invoices, being able to route those to a user for that user to complete that task, and then still being able to complete whatever work I need to with that invoice. So whether it was extracted straight through from the start or whether an RE user fixed or perfected some of the data, I can still run whatever bot is next to commit that data to a system of record or kick off another workflow. This uses pre-trained models as opposed to custom training. So my time to value is significantly reduced and I basically just choose exactly what fields I want to extract from the invoice and let it process. Coming in at number one is the JSON package. There is now a formally supported JSON package that is part of the .24 release. It enables me to establish a session with a JSON file or a string. So think of like a response body that comes back from a RESTful web service call. I can query for objects. I can get a node list of the provided child path and I can end my session. So this is a great way to interface with those JSON responses that you get from REST Web Services. Thinking back to what we just talked about with like the doc AI capability, this enables me to parse all of those different fields that I need to extract from that form. Last but not least in the dot 24 release features is the removal of prompt assignment. So if you've been developing in Automation Anywhere for a while now, you would know that every time you create a bot, there's this random default variable that gets created called prompt assignment. And in asking internally, I was told that this actually exists all the way back to Automation Anywhere 2.0 and 3.0. So this has been a part of the product for a really long time. Prompt assignment has been replaced in .24 and beyond with two sample variables. One is called sample number, the other is sample string. So if you're like me, you will sadly miss prompt assignment. It's been there for a long time. You were always there for us when we'd forgotten to create a variable, right? In .10 or .11, I remember configuring an object clone and I would configure all of it, exactly what I needed to do. And then it's like, where do you wanna save that value out to? And I forgot to create a variable, right? And so you would temporarily map it to prompt assignment and then save it so that you could go back and create a new variable and then come back and switch that. So. You've probably been in that situation if you've been developing with automation uh, anywhere for a while, but prompt assignment, you will be missed. Hey, thanks so much for hanging out for the top five developer features of Automation 360.24. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Automation Anywhere content. We wanna bring you the stuff you wanna see, so let us know below what other content you wanna see from the Automation 360 team. Finally, I talked about my favorite five features. Anything that I missed, anything that you've been excited about in dot 24, let me know in the comments below. My name is Micah Smith, go be great. Did you know that every time you click the like button on an Automation Anywhere video, a bot gets its wings? Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming Automation Anywhere tutorials and full bot builds. Go be great.